Test 2. Listening. Part 1. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. What will the boy take back to the shop? Did you get everything you wanted? I did. In fact, I only needed to go into one shop. I'd seen a T-shirt in the window and I got the last one in the sale. And some shorts to match. I bought this jacket too, but I'm not sure if I like it. Oh, it looks great. I'd keep it. But those shorts are a horrible colour. I should change them. Mm, you're right. They look different in the shop. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. Where will they meet? Oh, I'm tired of sitting in this traffic queue. Do you mind if I get out here because I want to go to the library? When you've parked the car, I'll see you in the cafe. You know, the one next to the swimming pool. OK. I think I'll try the car park behind the swimming pool. Then I won't have far to walk back. See you later then. Bye. Now listen again. Oh, I'm tired of sitting in this traffic queue. Do you mind if I get out here because I want to go to the library? When you've parked the car, I'll see you in the cafe. You know, the one next to the swimming pool. OK. I think I'll try the car park behind the swimming pool. Then I won't have far to walk back. See you later then. Bye. Two. What is the woman looking for? Good morning, madam. Can I help you? Oh, yes. My daughter left her coat on the bus yesterday. It's dark blue with a wide belt and a large collar, and it's got two big pockets on the front. She left her purse in one of them, unfortunately. I'll see if we've got a coat like that. Just a minute. Now listen again. Good morning, madam. Can I help you? Oh, yes. My daughter left her coat on the bus yesterday. It's dark blue with a wide belt and a large collar, and it's got two big pockets on the front. She left her purse in one of them, unfortunately. I'll see if we've got a coat like that. Just a minute. Three. Which photograph are they looking at? I took this on the way up before we reached the forest. You can see the village where we were staying. Look. When we got to the top of the mountain, I took lots of photos because there was a wonderful view of the sea from up there. But unfortunately, those ones were no good. Something went wrong with the camera. Now listen again. I took this on the way up before we reached the forest. You can see the village where we were staying. Look. When we got to the top of the mountain, I took lots of photos because there was a wonderful view of the sea from up there. But unfortunately, those ones were no good. Something went wrong with the camera. Four. Where is the boy's flat? Hi, is Misha there? No, sorry, he's not. Can I take a message? Yes, please. He's coming to see my new flat tomorrow and I need to give him directions. Can you tell him when he gets off the bus, he needs to cross the road and take the first turning on the right, then the second turning on the left? My flat is just before the roundabout on the right-hand side. OK, I've got that. I'll tell him.
Now listen again. Hi, is Misha there? No, sorry, he's not. Can I take a message? Yes, please. He's coming to see my new flat tomorrow and I need to give him directions. Can you tell him when he gets off the bus, he needs to cross the road and take the first turning on the right, then the second turning on the left? My flat is just before the roundabout on the right-hand side. OK, I've got that. I'll tell him. Five. Who is coming to stay with the girl? My aunt's coming to visit us at the weekend. She's bringing my twin cousins. They're six. They were babies last time I saw them, and it was really hard work for all of us because they used to cry a lot then. I'm really looking forward to seeing them again because they live in New York, so I don't see them much. My uncle has to stay behind because he has to work, and Joe, their teenage son, has decided to stay with him, so that's a shame. I won't see them this time. Now listen again. My aunt's coming to visit us at the weekend. She's bringing my twin cousins. They're six. They were babies last time I saw them and it was really hard work for all of us because they used to cry a lot then. I'm really looking forward to seeing them again because they live in New York, so I don't see them much. My uncle has to stay behind because he has to work and Joe, their teenage son, has decided to stay with him so that's a shame. I won't see them this time. Six. What was the weather like on Tom's holiday? How was your holiday, Tom? You had lovely weather, didn't you? Well, actually, it was much better here. We left here in bright sunshine, but we didn't see the sun again for the whole week. It didn't actually rain, but it was very cloudy. What about the hotel? Oh, there was a lovely view from our room. The hotel staff said it had rained a lot the week before, so we were lucky. Now listen again. How was your holiday, Tom? You had lovely weather, didn't you? Well, actually, it was much better here. We left here in bright sunshine, but we didn't see the sun again for the whole week. It didn't actually rain, but it was very cloudy. What about the hotel? Oh, there was a lovely view from our room. The hotel staff said it had rained a lot the week before, so we were lucky. Seven. Where is the desk now? You look tired, Alice. Oh, I am. I've moved all the furniture around in my bedroom. I used to have my desk behind the door, but I decided to move it. So where have you put it? I tried it under the big window, but it was too sunny there to study. So I put it under the little window opposite the door. Now listen again. You look tired, Alice. Oh, I am. I've moved all the furniture around in my bedroom. I used to have my desk behind the door, but I decided to move it. So where have you put it? I tried it under the big window, but it was too sunny there to study. So I put it under the little window opposite the door. That is the end of part one. Test two. Listening. Part two. Look at the questions for this part. You will hear a tour guide talking to a group of tourists about a coach trip. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two.
Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Good morning, everyone. I'm your tour guide for today. We've made a change to the trip we usually make on Thursdays. I hope none of you will mind. We're still going to visit the beautiful town of Brampton with its old university. And there'll be time to look round that as usual. But today, because we have a lot of children here this week, we're also going to a wildlife park which a colleague of mine has recommended. On the way to Brampton, we'll drive through some beautiful countryside. We'll go over the mountain and we'll have a lovely view of the lake from the top. We'll stop there for a few minutes so you can take some photos. In the next valley, we'll have a break for coffee. There's a cafe near a beautiful waterfall and if any of you want to go for a walk, you can. We'll get to Brampton at about 11.30. It's a lovely town. We'll start by taking a guided tour of the university, which was built in the 17th century. Then there'll be time for all of you to have a look at the shops. Most people come to Brampton nowadays for the shops, but it's the university that made the town famous. If you don't want to look at the shops, I suggest you visit the museum. After lunch, we'll get back on the coach and go to the wildlife park. We need to stay in the coach while we drive round because we'll see lions in the park, which can obviously be dangerous. Tell your children not to expect it to be like the zoo. The animals are sometimes hiding in the trees. I know some friends of mine have seen some tigers, but I've never seen them. And I'm afraid they no longer have any monkeys. But you may see some giraffes. We'll leave the wildlife park at half past five. The journey back takes about an hour and a quarter, so we'll return to the hotel at a quarter to seven. There'll just be time for you to change before dinner at a quarter past seven. Now then, before we get on the bus, if anyone wants to ask any questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm going to give each of you an information sheet about the places we're going to visit. Some of you were on yesterday's trip with me and I know you found the information sheet helpful. So, if we just move over here... Now listen again. Good morning everyone. I'm your tour guide for today. We've made a change to the trip we usually make on Thursdays. I hope none of you will mind. We're still going to visit the beautiful town of Brampton with its old university. And there'll be time to look round that as usual. But today, because we have a lot of children here this week, we're also going to a wildlife park which a colleague of mine has recommended. On the way to Brampton, we'll drive through some beautiful countryside. We'll go over the mountain and we'll have a lovely view of the lake from the top. We'll stop there for a few minutes so you can take some photos. In the next valley, we'll have a break for coffee. There's a cafe near a beautiful waterfall and if any of you want to go for a walk, you can. We'll get to Brampton at about 11.30. It's a lovely town. We'll start by taking a guided tour of the university, which was built in the 17th century. Then there'll be time for all of you to have a look at the shops. Most people come to Brampton nowadays for the shops, but it's the university that made the town famous. If you don't want to look at the shops, I suggest you visit the museum. 
After lunch, we'll get back on the coach and go to the wildlife park. We need to stay in the coach while we drive round because we'll see lions in the park, which can obviously be dangerous. Tell your children not to expect it to be like the zoo. The animals are sometimes hiding in the trees. I know some friends of mine have seen some tigers, but I've never seen them. And I'm afraid they no longer have any monkeys. But you may see some giraffes. We'll leave the wildlife park at half past five. The journey back takes about an hour and a quarter, so we'll return to the hotel at a quarter to seven. There'll just be time for you to change before dinner at a quarter past seven. Now then, before we get on the bus, if anyone wants to ask any questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm going to give each of you an information sheet about the places we're going to visit. Some of you were on yesterday's trip with me and I know you found the information sheet helpful. So, if we just move over here... That is the end of part two. Test two. Listening. Part three. You will hear someone talking on the radio about a competition. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part three. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Well, that's about it for this month's edition of Book Club. We hope you've enjoyed hearing our discussion this week. Now it's time for me to tell you about our super new competition. And I have to say, you won't believe the prize we've got for you this month. Would you believe we're giving you the chance to win your own computer? And not just a computer, it comes with a colour printer as well. This is a competition you really have to enter, isn't it? So what do you need to know? And what do you have to do? All you have to do is enter our short story competition. It couldn't be easier. We want you to write a short story up to 1,500 words long. The rules are very simple. In fact, they could hardly be simpler. We want lots of entries. What you have to do is sit down and write a short crime story using your own ideas. And they can be as strange and wonderful as you like. In fact, the stranger the better. But, and this is important, everything that happens in your story must be in the future. So just let your imagination fly away and start writing, because this could be your lucky month. Send your entries to me, Joy Jones, at the usual address. Put your name, address, telephone number and, very important this, so don't forget, your age at the end of your story. Oh, and I forgot to say, for this competition there's an age limit. You must be under 18 when you enter. Make sure you post your story in time to reach me by the 8th of March. So good luck! Good writing and good reading until next month. Now listen again. Well, that's about it for this month's edition of Book Club. We hope you've enjoyed hearing our discussion this week. Now it's time for me to tell you about our super new competition. And I have to say, you won't believe the prize we've got for you this month. Would you believe we're giving you the chance to win your own computer? And not just a computer, it comes with a colour printer as well. 
This is a competition you really have to enter, isn't it? So what do you need to know? And what do you have to do? All you have to do is enter our short story competition. It couldn't be easier. We want you to write a short story up to 1,500 words long. The rules are very simple. In fact, they could hardly be simpler. We want lots of entries. What you have to do is sit down and write a short crime story using your own ideas. And they can be as strange and wonderful as you like. In fact, the stranger the better. But, and this is important, everything that happens in your story must be in the future. So just let your imagination fly away and start writing, because this could be your lucky month. Send your entries to me, Joy Jones, at the usual address. Put your name, address, telephone number and, very important this, so don't forget, your age at the end of your story. Oh, and I forgot to say, for this competition there's an age limit. You must be under 18 when you enter. Make sure you post your story in time to reach me by the 8th of March. So good luck. Good writing and good reading until next month. That is the end of part three. Test two. Listening. Part four. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a man, Marcus, and a woman, Cora, who work in the same office. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part four. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hi there. Morning, or should I say afternoon? I'm not late, am I? Only a few minutes today, but you're never exactly early, are you? Well, it's the traffic, isn't it? There were queues of buses stopping anything from moving up the London road. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. It's the cars that make traffic jams because there are so many of them. And most of the time they have just one person in them, like you. At least the buses have more than one person in them. Anyway, I don't know why you don't come to work on your bike. You'd pass all the jams and you'd be fitter. I just don't accept that. What about the air I'd breathe while I was cycling? <laughs> I'd get wet in the rain. And I'd arrive at work all hot and sticky. But you wouldn't if you allowed enough time to come across the park. It's really quite pleasant riding that way, and it's not much further, and it's cheaper. Yeah, anything would be cheaper than the buses in this town. If they weren't so expensive, more people would catch them. They should make them cheaper. Or employers should pay part of people's bus fares. Hmm. That would cut the traffic and we'd all get to work in much less time. And it would be healthier for everyone, whether they were on a bike or not. If the buses weren't too old and smelly, some of them are terrible. But so are cars and lorries, of course. So, are you getting the bus tomorrow then? Well, I might consider it. But unfortunately, the bus stops a long way from my flat, so I'd have to get up earlier. And tomorrow's my day off anyway. Honestly, I sometimes wonder how you manage to get out of bed in the mornings. Well, I don't have to tomorrow. So we'd better get on with some work now. OK, OK. Now listen again. Hi there. Morning, or should I say afternoon? I'm not late, am I? Only a few minutes today, but you're never exactly early, are you? Well, it's the traffic, isn't it? 
There were queues of buses stopping anything from moving up the London road. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. It's the cars that make traffic jams because there are so many of them. And most of the time they have just one person in them, like you. At least the buses have more than one person in them. Anyway, I don't know why you don't come to work on your bike. You'd pass all the jams and you'd be fitter. I just don't accept that. What about the air I'd breathe while I was cycling? <laughs> I'd get wet in the rain and I'd arrive at work all hot and sticky. But you wouldn't if you allowed enough time to come across the park. It's really quite pleasant riding that way and it's not much further and it's cheaper. Yeah, anything would be cheaper than the buses in this town. If they weren't so expensive, more people would catch them. They should make them cheaper. Or employers should pay part of people's bus fares. Hmm. That would cut the traffic and we'd all get to work in much less time. And it would be healthier for everyone, whether they were on a bike or not. If the buses weren't too old and smelly, some of them are terrible. But so are cars and lorries, of course. So, are you getting the bus tomorrow then? Well, I might consider it. But unfortunately, the bus stops a long way from my flat, so I'd have to get up earlier. And tomorrow's my day off, anyway. Honestly, I sometimes wonder how you manage to get out of bed in the mornings. Well, I don't have to tomorrow. So we'd better get on with some work now. OK, OK. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet. You have one more minute. That is the end of the test.